and uh, welcome again. This is another quick look at uh, some further improvements and uh, new features or addition of uh, similar features to what we've had for a little while um, in this particular case. And that is for version 9.5, we've added a few more presets in the foliage. Uh, now, if you've never seen this, let me show you how you get started on that. You know you have the brushes here. You can right click on that and you'll see a lot of presets in different categories, different types of brushes, uh, such as the oil brushes here, thick oil. And that one uh, has a little bit of a embossing to it. Uh, and there are other types of oils and other types of natural media. Uh, there's a totally oil, which will do more of a smearing effect. So that sort of thing is what we call the natural media simulation or simulating graphics or, or uh, paint effects uh, that can go into the settings here where you have even some post effects capabilities for instance to enable translucent watercolor with uh, a little bit of pigment lifting even here so you can you can paint over that and it's it's going to to smear the uh, the the paint back in and paint that some more so it's doing a whole lot of very interesting effects there. So <clears throat> that's the natural media. There are other types of brushes and uh, you see them right here. There's a category, the particles. So particle brushes are a little bit different because they uh, throw particles into the path that you're drawing. So for instance, if I go to the first category here, the particles, that's the original first version of particles. Uh, it will shoot particles that are then starting to go on their own way. Uh, and do their own thing. They are subject to gravity that pulls them down. Uh, if you have zero gravity, they go all um, you know their own way and don't change that. Um, you might have a higher speed or velocity here, so they start going out a little bit faster. Uh, you might have different colors. Uh, you can change the color um, along the gradient. So along the particle path, they will go along the gradients uh, that you specify here. And that's basically something you can use to do fireworks, fire, smoke, uh, all sorts of really fancy stuff. And of course, grass, foliage. Uh, you see here all sorts of presets, uh, baddy grass, for instance, that will give you a little bit of a sky lighting effect. So it's, it's shaded to the dark side. Uh, the bottom end is shaded. And, and then you can quickly create grass, uh, stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> now, there are many presets and there are also other types. We have the bristle brushes. Now uh, let's see here, these are bristle brushes that we've had for about six or seven years, uh, if probably even more than that. And then orbitals that are uh, even more sophisticated, like 3D based um, particle trails. Let me see, maybe I need to give it a certain size. There you go. Uh, so that's, that's creating all sorts of interesting behaviors for the particle brushes there. Um, all sorts of different patterns and so on. Now the foliage brushes is really what I want to focus on here because there are some new presets in the foliage brushes. First of all, we've had the addition of uh, lighting that you see, I mean the shadows casting on themselves. And so if you create dense collections of these trees, um, you, you actually generate them in 3D and they get uh, to cast shadows on themselves. Or actually, it's called um, what do we call it? Ambient occlusion. And so, with that, uh, you you can create fairly quickly some more realistic uh, realistic uh, collections of bushes and trees and twigs and flowers and that sort of things. So there's a couple of presets here, and these presets uh, we've just added. There used to be about five or so evergreens, and they look like this. And now we've added a few more. So um, if you click on the load here, let's say uh, start from the top end here. Evergreen, let's go from number 15 and see what that one looks like. So there's some presets here that have been added. And that's not the only place, by the way. There's, I think there's a couple of other categories that were added. But uh, this, is, this is an interesting thing to, to play with. And again, you can uh, enable or disable the shading and the shadows. And so you, you, you can have them in plain coloring like this. Um, and let me go with one that I like a little bit better from the way that th this is like very dense shrubbery styles. Let's go something a little bit different. Uh, let's go this. 
Uh, you'll see there's, there's lots of different places to use some of these. There you go. Uh, so if you go without, sh uh, without the shading, they'll be a little bit lighter, but they will also, uh, with the shadows, they'll also be subject to uh, lighting available based on other tricks around it. So if you disable all that, you don't have shadows and you don't have shading, you do have uh, the, the trees or the bushes appearing at their plain colors and they're not subject to to brightness changes but if you add i mean here you can see that it's it's still saying all oh, it's kind of appearing flat right it doesn't give you any sort of depth to that and now i'm going to go the other way which is uh instead add some shadows and that's adding the ambient occlusion as the tooltip will show here render ambient occlusion shadows and so when you do that it uh gives you a little bit of a uh, a depth perception because it actually renders these particles in 3D. It's not just a 2D flat, it's a 3D uh, path that the particles take. And so as a result of that, there are some that are closer to us and there are some that are farther away in the background. And as you paint them, it will shade it based on that distance. And so very quickly you can create some great, uh, more realistic collections of, of trees or bushes that are in the foreground. So this is something that we'll use, of course, together with uh, perhaps also some background scene. All right, so let's go and see. Uh, one thing I wanted to do is actually show two 3D aspects in uh, Howler. Um, you have the 3D under um, the puppy ray, the ray tracing, and there's the 3D designer. And this one has uh, evolved a lot. With the version 9.5, we're doing a lot more there to also add some 3D visual realism. But of course, Puppy Ray is interesting because it tiles it and can go endlessly into infinity uh, and beyond. <laughs> um, so uh, what, what we'll do is uh, start with the uh, render uh, plasma noise. And I'll make that one seamless, although we can also change that to do so later and I'm gonna add a layer and do another filter um, do a render plasma noise again but this time I'll make it a little bit smaller smaller units or bigger one way or the other just different right? that's the key there and um, and then I'm going to reduce the opacity of that layer or rather the, the amount of that, the default is not an opaque, we don't actually do opaque layers here, uh, except if you use the blue screen or magic pink, drop magenta kind of coloring schemes. Uh, but what you can do is you can use uh, the, the modes like the screen mode or uh, difference mode, creates interesting ridges of elevation there. Um, and what you could do perhaps is uh, have, copy that to the swap buffer. So I'm going to copy that to the swap image, as we call it now. Um, might disable this one, might go back to this layer. So in the main layer here we have this, and in the swap image we have this. So these are very similar, but yet very different images. And we can have one affect the other by way of uh, combining them. Um, it's a bit like layers blending, but just between the main uh, image and the swap image and so I'm going to use the difference mode here and then also um, uh, perhaps adjust how much of that you want so you can you can do a little bit adjusting here um, so now once we have that perhaps give it a little bit more extremes go expand the dynamic range so we know we have some parts especially here that are very bright and some parts that are very dark and then a lot of things in between so now I'm going to perhaps Take a quick snapshot of that and store that. And then, um, let's see, do we need any more? Oh, wait, I didn't actually combine that. Let's do merge with, uh, merge with swap. There you go, that's the one I want. So, um, there you go, store that image. We could do that even one more. That that will create even more interesting uh, displays. Let's just do that. Let's do one more uh, merge with swap. And then this time perhaps give it a little bit of an adjustment. So you see, you can you can create some really fascinating textures for marbles and uh, wood grain and other uh, patterns uh, quite quickly. And what I'll do is I'll get it kind of almost to a flat gray here, but then there's this ridge of brightness. <clears throat> and that will make an interesting canyon view because uh, we what one thing we'll do also is <clears throat> we'll go and adjust um, the, the the levels here or the curves 
use the curve tool to adjust uh, the brightness. When it's already pretty bright, we want it to kind of stay bright for a little bit of a while, so it kind of makes a plateau. And then at the bottom here, it suddenly falls down to, to low elevation. So we, we can create kind of an S shape here um, on this. And that will, that, that's a great way to create something that looks a little bit more like Canyon Lands, you know, like Grand Canyon or something like that. So we'll go to uh, store this image. This one should still be um, seamless. Um, you can always, if you forgot to make that seamless from the get-go, you can always make it seamless right here. Let's skip that for now. So now what I'm going to do is um, to, to work with 3D Designer to create an elevation map to, to use this elevation map, uh, where is it here, 3D Designer, to use this elevation map, but also to colorize it for some snow and greens and uh, rocky or brownish colors on the, the hills. So um, this is not really going to be what I want in the final, but I'm going to use this to create a little bit of a, uh, a slightly different color, because you can, you can have the object color, or you can have the color come from the swap image, which in this, or from the image itself, or from the swap image. But both of them are pretty dark. And what I really like to do instead is to use, click on the more over here and create the texture uh, that will go into the swap image, but create it based on a, a snowpack in the higher elevation and some mountain ridges and then some greens uh, down in the valleys. So maybe I want the snowpacks to come down a little bit more. Uh, you can also adjust a little bit um, how suddenly it changes or how softly it blends. So you can do the smoothing here to get very sudden cutoff of the snowpacks or increase that and you get uh, kind of a flurry, flurry white everywhere. Uh, so you, you, you can play with those parameters to see a little bit different uh, looks. And let's see, let's try 111 here. That's too soft there. Um, let's give it something like this. Let's do 22, 22. There you go. And then just adjust the elevation a little bit. So we get some snow flurries down into the valleys, but not all the way. And there you go. All right. So we have that. We also may want to add some more erosion. So you know that you can use the erosion tool now to get a little bit of uh, valleys. You see right here, some gullies and crevices and so on shaped and formed. So that adds a lot of really interesting detail as well can invert that if you want. You can adjust a little bit uh, maximum run length. Sometimes you want those valleys to be carved a little bit longer or deeper. And sometimes, much to the contrary, a little bit less is better. Sometimes less is more. And uh, viscosity, let's try that. Sometimes the viscosity can create some really interesting valleys and carve out some just beautiful landscapes here. Uh, at some point, though, we reach saturation, so let's see if we have perhaps better luck with that much. Yeah, that's good. We get an interesting area here. Um, okay, so let's say uh, that's that. Uh, of course, if we wanted to just stay in the 3D designer, we could use the fog. Let's say the, the object color is here. The background color, that's black right now. Let's make that kind of a um, toxic green or there you go. Let's pretend we are on Venus. And of course, it never snows on Venus, at least not these days anymore. But uh, let's say we want to have some fog like this, or uh, not just a distant fog, right? But also the, um, the fog uh, elevation base. So you can do that here, uh, linear or nonlinear, and uh, add some elevation based fog. And if you want that to be very thick, you can make it go really close. And then it looks like a, a sea of, of, uh, of really dense fog. Um, but the, the other things we want to do, of course, that's, that's just uh, in case you want to just stay with that. Uh, I like the other way to use this now, and that's in, um, in uh, Puppy Ray. Uh, but this particular elevation map is really nice to use. And so one thing you can do, you can store some of the things. Like the, the effect of the erosion that we have here, you may want to store that as a erosion displacement map. Right or uh, yeah, essentially a, a, a displacement map. So I'm going to go and store this, and there it is. And then I'm going to also store the lighting effect. Now we didn't put the lighting there, but that that's something that you can use to bake the the lighting effects into the texture. Uh, there's also the Z buffer you can store, and that will basically be a, a depth 
you see here a, a grayscale of how far it is as a depth map. Uh, one more we could also store is um, the uh, the lighting. So let's add some lighting here with the ray tracing of shadows, maybe soft or medium medium quality shadows. And so that one you typically will want to have it uh, cast some shadows. Um, let's go like this here. And actually, we don't need all that detail anymore. So let's see it like this. So you can see now here that for light source number one. We can have it uh, show the um, show the the cast shadows as we rotate this around. It's, it's nice to have the elevation down low and the zenith far away. Bring the zenith far away. Maybe increase the light a little bit. Then you get some really good contrast um, effect from this from these shadows. Right. So it's always good to have. You don't want, you you don't want to see it like head on like from the from the uh, from the camera like this there you don't see any shadows <laughs> you really want it to have uh, like low altitude and coming in from the side so that it, it will enhance the depth perception uh, with all these uh, these shadows <clears throat> uh, so so that's something you can also do uh, you can add another light source here um, and uh, all of that can be uh, baked into a, a lighting map and that's the store lighting right there so you see that right over here now uh, so let's say we're done with that and we want to um, to maybe we use this you know maybe this is the image the final image but uh, we can actually use these images that we stored like the lighting or especially this one here um, you can store this <coughs> that's the shadows uh, that's the depth you can use these and here is the erosion map so you can use these to create some really fancy um, elevation maps now right so we still have the colors that were stored also with the snow packs that went into the swap image uh, so you know click up here to to see it and then store that and so now we have a whole collection of different resources we have the the color map here for the uh, elevation based and also slope based that's the thing about it is that it's not just looking at how high is it but also how steep was it and so along the um the upper area of the 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 plateau we have the snow packs and then uh, down in the valleys where it's uh, green uh we do have some snow packs too but somewhere along the sides these uh cliffs were too steep and there, there is no snow pack on that and and that's that's of course you can totally control that if you if you want to have it uh show um uh, uh, snowy there too. Now here is the um, the overlaying um, displacement uh, for the for the gullies and the uh, the erosion effect. So one thing you want to do really is if you have this is the color and this is the elevation. What you want to do is combine these two, right? So you can, for instance, you can load this one and then subtract this one. I think you can do that directly here. You can go here and say combine subtract. Right, and so that will subtract the white parts from this. Um, will be uh, darkened now. If it's too deep, too f too much of a cut into it, what you could do is uh, subdue that a little bit, adjust, you know, do this interactive undo thing. Uh, another thing is before you cut it, maybe you want to uh, to add a little bit of blurriness to that, so it's not doing a very crisp cut, but a little bit more of a soft. Uh, like the the light diffusion would be really good. In fact, uh, of course, dark diffusion if it's black on white. But in this case, we have the the carvings or the gullies as white. So uh, make them um, kind of bleed into the surrounding area. And so what you see now is uh, that there is a bit of uh, bleeding. See the the original one was on these like this Y shape here. Um, that's the original. In fact, if I undo, you see what it was like that. And then if you if you go to the photographic filters, light diffusion, you can now add uh, a bit of uh, ble bleeding to the neighborhood here and, um, and, and make it basically produce a little bit of a softer transition into those gullies. So do that two or three times maybe even, right? So if you, you get much more... Um, uh, much more of that uh, softening erosion effect and sometimes you use that to add uh, 
uh, to it uh, to the point where it looks not so much like just erosion by water but also by other elements because maybe wind will soften it and round it off again um, um, let's see okay so let's use that let's store this one and that one so now we compare the two there's this one and there's that one right and then so we put this one in that's the elevation map and we want to subtract this new one here let's go combine subtract so now we have the elevation map um, that basically includes those uh, deformation the, the gullies and again if it's not enough do that even with this one on top of it combine even more and and maybe that one's too much so let's use the un interactive undo it's really total freedom here to combine it the way you best see fit and so when you see something like this this you know is going to look great this this is this is an elevation map we can really work with where we have the the gullies or the the valleys carved out from the erosion effect and so let's go store that one and we have a nice snapshot here we have the color maps that one stays in the um in the swap image actually we might want to add a little bit more interesting details for instance on the rocks maybe we need some um, granularity on that you know make it look like rocks make it look like there's a little bit of uh, um, sediment structure or gravel or big rocks so we need to select all that let's go to the selection mask and select the uh, you know you could go by lights if you want the white part the midtones might gra grab the green better to use the color key in this case because we have just three colors we have white we have green and we have the this brownish gray uh, or slate um, and I'm gonna go with the the gray here and you can also use the uh, hold on let me switch to a different mode here where we go overlay so we can see um, that uh, maybe we don't need to see the marching ants really but what we do want to see is uh, turn alpha on and if there is a, ma a selection mask show it with the overlay mode all right so what we'll do is go selection select by color and let's say if we go on green you can see the green stays and everything else gets tinted to that magenta indicating that uh, it's not selected so if i select white the white is visible and everything else gets tinted and so now i'm gonna have to select the the gray and uh, that's a little bit tricky but it's certainly doable and so the gray let me see if I uh, have the green there you go so I have the gray selected the white snow packs are uh, and, I, I, and 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 uh, let me let me finish this <laughs> this thought I can certainly work with the tolerance here but it's a quick and easy one to select the gray uh, parts of the um, of the slopes uh, you know on on the rocks uh, the sediment layers so those now we need to do something with right so we could for instance add uh, fill them with um, the the fill tool here fill settings um, we could say we want to do a pattern fill let's choose a pattern that looks a little bit like a rocky structure maybe sediments something like this brushed that might look interesting or just cement uh, click here to see it tiled yeah that might look interesting there's a couple of others that might look equally fascinating uh, we might want to use one of those but make it smaller let's try this one but let's say we want it smaller this one here might be interesting too because that actually looks like gullies um, even though it's like from a palm tree I think what we'll what we'll do is you know let's use this one like this rock thing and then make it a little bit smaller now this image is actually loaded when we pick it here any of these it becomes the custom brush image you can actually see it up here this is the the image that's currently in the brush so as you know that's the paper sorry yeah that's not the brush so uh what we do is we simply use that uh in the brush we can adjust the size of it uh and make it a little bit smaller and when we validate that you'll see it's smaller here and now we have a, t a smaller tiling repetition there so let's use that and just fill it all over okay so let's go to uh, the image tool here and say fill or maybe paint fill there's some shortcuts Q W uh, let's use fill and of course those are very big rocks still but you know it, sh it, it will work for the concept um, what we'll do is we'll now adjust a little bit how much of that we want we want it still relatively dark but this is going to be a um, a change on the color map so we can actually show it somewhat more like this uh, and then we can also apply the same to the 
uh, displacement to the elevation map, the height map. So one thing I would do is uh, copy that or store that, and uh, this now has the the colors. Uh, still on the gray side, but with this additional rocky appearance. And then on top of that, we can also uh, use it. Also stored the alpha channel. Now, if we if we didn't quite have that, one thing we can do is actually store the alpha channel by itself, uh, like this here. Store alpha. That way, we see that same selection mask that we used to actually identify the rocks and put those rocks on the rocks. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is getting convoluted, isn't it? Uh, so now we can go back to the elevation map. So this is the color map with the rocks. Now here's the elevation map, and we can make sure we replace the. Uh, we still have the um, the selection, uh, the same uh, selection mask here, and we apply the fill here too. But it will be less of it. Right? We don't want that much of that fill pattern. So we could do paint fill. That's not it. That one actually uses the texture pattern. Uh, let's use the image fill like this, regular fill. There you go, but very subtle. So we need to adjust the interactive undo here. And um, yes, there is some wind here. Uh, actually, it's the fan blowing. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. But uh, so we have a little bit, just give it very tiny little bit of displacement. This is the elevation map. You don't want that much because suddenly you're going to get a lot of pillars here. Although that could come, come to think of it, that could look really interesting. That might look a little bit more like Bryce Canyon style, style uh, pillars. So why not? Let's try that. And uh, in fact, let's do it in such a way that it kind of fades to the side. So one thing I'll do is I'll, I'll adjust the, um, the selection mask by blurring it a little bit. Right, here's the Gaussian Blur Alpha, and I'll adjust the Alpha a little bit, and then that way we, we have a sort of a transition on that, and now we can go and apply the Fill. Uh, fill, there you go, and um, we can even then still do the Interactive Undo, and just give it a little bit of those pillars. So then that way that will give us some uh, up and downs in the area of that transition, right? It won't have it where the snow levels are at the top are peaking and, and the, f the plateau is reached on the mountains, the flat top is reached, but it will have it along the edges where the erosion is really strong and we get much of that fracturing of the rocks. That will look, that, I think that will look really smashing, no pun intended there. Um, we could also even add some more small parts there with a little bit of jitter. Let's do, um, oh, I don't know, maybe filter, uh, noise, jitter, or jitter blur, blur plus, uh, and add a little bit. That's too much, though. I really want only a tiny little bit of that. There. Yeah. So we get more of the big, big components. And then, again, we can also actually add a lot, but then fade it away. Right? So if it's too much here, that's okay. We can now use the interactive undo. To fade that so here's none of it here's too much of it and we'll just find it somewhere in between is the perfect sweet spot somewhere around there all right so now we have a image map that looks like this let's go and store it let's go and uh, get rid of the selection mask and uh, you know it looks at from from a distance it doesn't look that much different but it does have a lot of additional detail uh, and there is one more that I could do, uh, see, uh, that I could see doing, and that's over here uh, to also put some bumpiness or like make it look like tree treetops on the green or some other type of, of details. That green is look looks too homogeneous. I need a little bit of variety. The snow packs is good to show just plain white, uh, even though there too you could add a little bit of bumpiness or changes if you wanted to make it more interesting looking. But for the green, we definitely need that. So let's go selection. Um, let's see, select uh, again color. Let's go on the green and uh, give it a little bit of uh, tolerance there, but not too much because we're really well. We could we could select it and then blend it again. Do the, uh, the softening on the blur alpha here and. Uh, get it a little bit bumpy there on the green and if that those bumps will appear to to represent trees we have some presets that could be useful for that again on the fill settings there it is and this time let's go select different pattern namely this one up here the dinosaur skin it's actually <laughs> it's actually really useful for for treetops and I'm gonna make them very small 
so that they look smaller than uh, the rocks. The rocks looked uh, pretty oversized. Uh, let's go and uh, make it uh, resample there, make it a little bit smaller like that. So we have a nice set of rocks and we could probably do something about making it uh, displace it a little bit, right? Make it a bit more randomized. Uh, in a perfect world, we'd really have time to do that. Uh, there is uh, also this pattern here. Um, this one might, uh, let's, let's try this one here, why not? I don't know, there's so many things to try here and so little time. Um, yeah, there's some greenish colors there. Um, some dry mud looks good too at times, but this is supposed to be green. So let's go, let's go back to this one. Let's keep it small. Brush, um, resample, maybe not that small. There you go. All right, let's use this. And so let's fill that into this area. Let's go with image fill and uh, a adjustable paint fill might be useful too. Uh, no, it did not. So let's go with fill, regular fill. There you go. And, and then uh, adjust it so we don't get too much of that, but we also don't want too little of that. In fact, if it is the bumpiness you want, but you don't want that brightness, well, let's just go to another filter here and adjust the colors. Uh, maybe you wanted more of less uh, less of the green and less of the blue and a little bit more of a reddish tint but still also darker at that and then maybe you want just the bright parts to get darker but the dark parts leave them alone so go to the advanced section of the adjust color um, you can there you can adjust uh, you know what's already dark leave it alone what's bright that's the one we want to adjust and give it a bit more of a different tint here uh, the mid-tones same thing you could uh, Maybe give it a, a bit more of a saturated green look. And there you go. So we have that. And then perhaps one more filter might be to give it, uh, uh, you know, hue saturation value. You can reduce that. Um, give it a little bit more, uh, you know, darkness. There you go. And so that's, that's uh, one of many things you can do to make the color map or the elevation map or both of them more interesting looking. All right, so I'm going to store this one. That's a safekeeper. Um, so I'm going to go clear now the elevation, I mean the, the alpha channel. Switch over to this one to see, okay, that's where we really need the colors. That's in the swap image. No, that's in the main image. So this is where it needs to be in the swap image. Last look, verify. Yep, we got the rocks, the bumps on there. Don't have much detail on the snow, but don't care for that. And we have a lot of greenish stuff there in the back. And then we have the elevation map. So this one is the color map, and this one's the elevation map, where we did already work on the gullies, on the rocks. Uh, we could add some bumpiness to the trees as well to add even more shading or bumpy appearance to that. Uh, but lazy as I am, I'm going to skip on that today. Uh, so we do have in the swap buffer the colors. Let's switch back to the main image and put this one in. That's where we want to be. All right. Uh, if you check the two together, you can do that. But really what we want to do is now use the 3D and uh, also perhaps something else in the... Um, uh, oh yeah, we need to have something for the for the background sky. Well, we know we we we've got some presets for the background skies. Uh, let's not tinker with that. We could though. Uh, it would just have to be loaded as a custom image in the brush system. So let's go to the final. Um, we we did start with our transforms and went into 3D Designer, uh, and we could go back there one more time with the same view, and this time it will have some more bumpiness and some more gullies and some other really interesting details there and it can even still add to that on top of it so uh you know sometimes that's really a, a great way to to get the the perfect view uh very quickly and also uh add uh, some fog to that and elevation fog where is it something like this you know sometimes you don't want to even see the the background there at the lower level sometimes you just want to see a a sea of, of fog and a couple of head a couple of uh, mountains uh, sticking their heads out there <laughs> so that could be a, an interesting view right there but i'm not going to use that instead i'm going to go to my final with um where is it puppy ray the ray tracing version and uh accelerated in the gpu and uh let's see we have uh 
elevation could be a little bit lower. Uh, we can have the camera tilt up. We can have the fog tile it to the background a little bit further. So that's the beauty of it is that it's not just one tile. It can go endlessly. Uh, and now here we can also adjust the position of the light source. And let's say we want it from over there um, in the far. Let's put it in the far left. There you go. Bring it up a little bit. Uh, we have the global illumination to brighten it up in the dark shades as well. So we got the sky uh, adding that lighting. Maybe we change the sky to a reddish. There you go. And that adds a little bit of a reddish tint to the snow and anything else that's white enough to reflect it or to, to show it. Uh, and then we'll go into that and um, you know fly through that until we see a perfect vantage point where the the gullies and the erosion are showing and the light source is really beautiful there's a an edge condition here but i think if we increase the erosion it will go away or maybe we'll want it maybe it's some some fancy pillars that we want so let's increase the quality on the render there a little bit and yeah that will make some interesting uh uh, weird details, but interesting nonetheless. Um, let's go and play around that a little bit. See if we can find another couple of views. Oh, there are some interesting erosion effects here. Let's go take a look at that. Yeah, there's some some valleys carved by that erosion. And so you see how that works. You can uh, you can create um, some some interesting. Let's see if I can go perhaps a little bit more on this side there. There's definitely some interesting things happening in that view. So <coughs> let's see, uh, let's go out of this. I'm now going to uh, resample everything down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go say, just for the sake of speed and for the demo to be done today, <laughs> I'm going to store this one more time and then I'm going to resample everything. So I'm going to resample it half size. 640 by 360. In fact, even a little bit less than that. You know, let's go uh, 480. What's that? Two, yeah, 480 by 270. And so that way we get a very small view, but still a fairly high quality one. And in fact, I need to, that's not the one I needed to store. It's this one. So I'm going to squeeze that in uh, for the elevation map. I'm going to say scale to fit. There you go. And uh, and then I'm going to switch to the swap image. It's already there. Uh, that one got um, resampled too, so we're good to go. And uh, I might want to store that one. So at that size, at that new size. So let's store that. That's the the new size, small elevation maps back to the main image. Store that one too at that size. And so now we have those two. And you know, one thing you could do is you could even use this as the um the, the the skylight right why not let's let's actually this will make a dark sky with some funky looking clouds uh let's go load that as the brush uh, use the selection as the brush and since everything is selected the entire image is now in the brush and that's what puppy ray will use now before i go back into puppy ray i'm going to turn this into an animation let's go to animation and create an animation of let's say 444 oh no my my favorite number 555 five. um and um, and then at this point, I'll simply fly through that. Um, so I'm going to go to Filter, Transform, Puppy Ray on the GPU. And so here is where that same view is again. Let's go and clear any prior keyframes. And let's go and position us a little bit above it. And look perhaps uh, up into the sky. And let's look at that other sky map now. So, yep, there it is. Here's that. This is the elevation map, right? <laughs> but also makes an interesting sky with some noctilucent uh, clouds or something like that. So I'm going to use that, adjust the brightness of its uh, illumination, its lighting effect, adjust the brightness of the sunlight that we have here somewhere and that sunlight i'm going to give it a distinct kind of a reddish tint to some extent not too much there you go um and i'm going to bring it down low so it casts shadows oh that's the one here so it casts shadows that are pretty long and make it a little bit brighter there 
Um, so that's a good starting point. Now I need my animations. I'm going to start with this here. Uh, interpolation I want, but details I want a lot too, so I'm going to keep the pre-filter at a fairly low value. If you make it high, it's going to soften everything to look like really soft badlands. So I'm going to give like this. The fog I'm going to make a little bit darker and more whitish. So maybe kind of a grayish like this. Goes into the dark, um, into the night. A little bit too dark here though, so let's go perhaps something like this. Still has, well, that's too bright again. So, I don't know, we need to figure out where we want it. There you go. So, it's kind of a dark, hazy, uh, muggy looking sky here. The fog distance can be adjusted here too. Um, let's see what else we have. We look up. Okay, so we have that. We have some brightness from the sky we can still adjust. And then we can make it a good quality render, like the final render, to see if that. Uh, works for us. Um, we could go now and uh, do a little fly through here. So let's go and first uh, take the camera up into the sky and keyframe that and then bring it uh, this much into the animation and bring it down about this much. Tilt the head a little bit, keyframe that. Now I'm gonna go tilt it back the other way and kill, still keep looking down, but also start moving down. So I'm going to go here and move down. And maybe I need a little bit more angle. Let's open that and change the zoom to 2. So it's a little bit more of a wide angle. So keyframe that. And then go back to the depth, the position, and move into the scene even more. And change the angle to look back up a little bit towards the horizon, but we haven't looked this way yet. Let's take check this part and then move on. I don't know, which way do we want to go here? Let's look for some interesting features inside this scene. There, something like this. And there. Um, the key is to constantly keep the eye uh, interested in finding something new and something different. Okay, uh, let's see for instance what happens now if the sun suddenly explodes. So we go here and we actually also uh, adjust the position of the light. There you go. Um, I don't know, where do we want the light to be? Somewhere around there. But also the brightness of the light we can increase there. Okay, so something like this. And then uh, just keep moving. Now this time, instead of moving the camera, I can move also uh, the terrain. I can take the terrain here and move that. And that will make slightly different shading effects. Uh, I can also increase the depth of the extrusion on that terrain. So make it flat or make it high. Make, let's go make it flat first, like, the, like so, and then go to the very end and bring it up higher. But as I'm doing that, I still want to move also, so I'm gonna keep moving like so. So, uh, and then how about we change the fog? No, that's odd. Let's keep the fog far away here. Okay. All right, so uh, let's see one more. Yeah, that's good. Let's give it like that. Keyframe that last one. So now we have a little path for the camera and the terrain and everything. And we just need to give it our best quality render. And because this is a relatively small resolution, low resolution image, it's going to go pretty fast. Uh, and you could actually give it even better quality here by working on the ray steps down to maybe five or six. Don't go too low because if you do go too low, it may time out on the driver and reset and you lose everything. So, I mean, that's one of the drawbacks with the GPU side is that it's, uh, it's not multi-threaded, not truly multi-threaded yet. And so, um, if the graphics device times out or doesn't get any response within two or three seconds, of a rendering that's too long, uh, you may be in trouble there. Make sure, therefore, you save often. Uh, I'm going to change the anti-aliasing a little bit here to, uh, let's say, to 15. Let's go and select the zero and put five in there. The moment I do that, it re-renders it. You don't want to go too far. Uh, I've done this at 640 by 360, even with level four, so I think I'm safe to do that uh, here. But it also depends on how far your fog is. If you tile your textures far enough, it may take too long, so you be careful on that. 
and in case of doubt just don't push it too far especially if it's going to be a fast moving animation you don't have time to really see all the details right so don't don't go beyond what you really need now i'm actually going to make it a little bit lesser quality because i really want to see this done soon so i'm going to say um you know let's let's just animate with our regular parameters called uh, final render that that'll be good enough we don't need anything else really so let's render that so that's going to render probably going to take about one second per frame or even less than that you can see it right there one mississippi two mississippi yeah, about two sec two frames per second and so then that way we get to see this animation very soon all right thanks for watching and uh stay tuned for more project dog waffle howler 9.5 coming soon it is now as of this recording middle of uh, july tomorrow is the final game uh, on the world cup and i'm not going to say who i'm rooting for but <laughs> the uh the next thing you'll see in a couple of weeks, we'll have this release 9.5, probably around middle of August, early August to middle of August. There's still a bunch of great new features added that are in the making. Uh, somewhere we might see some cloud computing, but I'm not going to miss explain what that really means. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we are working on the elements in many different aspects. We've seen the snow packs, we've seen the slope controlling whether the snow packs take foot on the steep sides of the hills. We've seen um, erosion added to get some gullies and uh, fracturing of the rocks. Um, we've seen uh, fog, we've seen dynamic lighting in 3D Designer, we've seen uh, you know, shadows uh, cast on particle brushes, on the foliage brushes. So a, a lot of different things that are coming to this version 9.5, which is a, a, a paid upgrade for anybody who already has version 9.0, uh, which of course the latest free update for that was version 9.2. So uh, stay tuned and thanks for watching. And uh, thank you so much for uh, waffling and howling.
Thank you.